Okay, guys. Look, Connor is not ready. Come on, man. Oh, I was just clicking record. Yeah. Hey, get the stuff together, man. Come on. Look, guys, we have another special episode. This is going to be a little bit different for you because, you know, we do social media. So, again, that's probably going to relate. Maybe you're gonna, we're going to take this road. We're going to explore real estate a little bit because this man is very cool. We spoke with him multiple times. I consider him a friend already. So, I... hopefully, feel the same. So, my yeah, mate, for sure. Connor Sanders right here. So, I'm just looking at his Insta. You can actually go and, go and follow him on Insta. He's doing some I... really creative stuff he's from london he's ceo of howling creations and he does a daily hustle podcast that you can go and subscribe as well so we had a short conversation i would say briefly before uh before this podcast but i'm really excited to have you on the podcast and to share your story and just boom thank you for for, for being here connor appreciate it I Hey man, I appreciate that. No, it's definitely, definitely cool. Like to uh, chat with you. Like we spoke, what it's like our second time or like third time, like calling, having a proper conversation. Uh, and yeah, no, you're, we do a lot, we do similar stuff and we're interested in uh, similar stuff like with the real estate and obviously we do social media and like digital marketing stuff. So yeah. no, no, it's, it's cool to chat with people that are in the same, same niche as you. Definitely, definitely. And Connor is definitely a cool, cool cat for you guys to follow. <laughs> I mean, he's like, you know, we, we spoke, we spoke before, uh, we met in a networking event and that's, you yep. know, like we had this conversation before. It's funny sometimes how you meet, you know, people like, like randomly. Well, again, that wasn't randomly that, you know, we prepared for that. We, we yeah, bought yeah. tickets, but you know, it's it just, it's just awesome. So again, like I got to know you a little bit more, but maybe for the audience who are fresh in here and like looking at you thinking like, who's Connor, maybe you can yeah yourself a little bit more and just tell the story how did you end up being uh, a ceo of howling Creation? yeah yeah okay cool so yeah uh so i started out i guess you could say my sort of like corporal career i guess you could say like i started out as like an intern in digital marketing about three years ago and then i sort of learned a lot of fundamentals in everything with marketing but mostly while i was there i was the content guy uh, so i used to do a lot of uh interviews and just like photography work just content for the agency and all of their clients and then i started to like in love with the idea of doing it freelance and building my own agency so it just slowly started being that going to networking events uh doing after work and doing some little freelance projects so i started um a company called howling creations with uh my co-founder conrad he's based in canada and i'm in london um and uh, yeah we started out as just doing animation work we used to call it howling animations and we used to do like animated explainer videos um, and then it kind of got expanded we started doing more video work like covering events or just any sort of advertising campaign and photography work like that so we've been doing that for the last three years and we're just trying to keep pushing that uh one of the things that is working great for us is working with youtubers and being their like uh, go-to post-production sort of team in a way so we would manage like all of their uploads and that is like consistent work which is great because one of the problems with uh doing creative work is some a company might only hire you when they've got an event on and that might be once every three months or once every four months so it's like consistent work is a challenge in this space and youtubers is where it's at so free free tip on that feel free to go and attempt at stealing my clients um <laughs> and uh <laughs> no nah, I, I don't know what to say and uh, yeah in the last uh, three months i've been pushing well uh, a new i've worked i'm working on a new brand called daily hustle uh, like you mentioned yeah we have a podcast and it's kind of split into three sections uh, so it is a brand i am working on uh designing some pieces uh there's only uh one thing designed right now and that's like a, a t-shirt but i did it's slow because i didn't want to do like drop shipping or anything like that i wanted to work with a proper manufacturer and i wanted to have full control over what i wanted to design so that's what i'm doing it's just more expensive as uh, minimum order quantities are, are obviously a thing <laughs> not with like drop shipping obviously um so that's obviously what we're working on and then the the, the third part of it is um i've been doing this thing for the last uh three years as well called matched betting which is like a, a, a risk-free way of um abusing betting site promotions by covering all the outcomes of a bet by betting against yourself sounds confusing i know but basically i made uh, a bunch of content teaching everyone how to do it super easy to, to I've consume seen it. yeah i've seen it on instagram story i was like yeah. before we jumped on a call i was like what what is, what is that 
so yeah, yeah that's what that's what i've been that's what i've been grinding on the last few months i've been it's, it's been it's been a slow process because the developer i've been working with has been has been a bit slow with me but um it's 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 up on the site to be able to to consume that and uh what i what i wanted to do because there are other people in the match ben space that obviously are creating content to educate people into match ben and i kind of just had a look at what everyone was doing and think how can i do it better and there's a few things that i i believe that i'm doing as better than everyone is one is i'm not focusing on affiliating what will make me the most money i'm showing what is the best way for people to make money so there are certain platforms and exchanges and blah 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 that people will try to uh, get people to sign up to and stuff because that will make them the most money which is what not what not what i do is i show what i do and it, what is the best way of doing much better um so that's one thing i do i also have this um so basically yeah, what match betting is is abusing offers so i also have a page on the site called just slash offers and it's just i spent hours going through every betting site and finding all the best promotions and i've created like an updated list of every offer with like a video guide to show you how to do it as well um so that's kind of where i am with that um sorry yeah. if i'm rambling on with it yeah but yeah that's that's, that's what i do howling creations and daily hustle that's what i'm pushing uh and yeah i'm gonna stick it in until i die <laughs> yeah that's awesome I, I love what you do with the company again with the howling creations is, is that would be the main again you mentioned that's the main focus yeah that, that that's the main focus obviously yeah that's what i, I want to build that's what i make majority of my money from but the daily hustle is like a it's like a it's like a project because obviously match betting is my side hustle it's what i do was what i invest my cash in to, to make money on the side so i wanted to brand it and I've always been in love. Like I, I do enjoy fashion and I, and I love the idea of having an e-com business. I, I love the idea of having a successful e-com business. And I thought, okay, I definitely want to do something with a brand in the future. And then I, but I knew, I knew, I knew it wasn't going to start working. I was, but I knew as soon as I got the name for it, it would, I was going to start it. And then I, I got, I, one day I just got the name and I was like, fuck, right. And then I just got a designer to make the logo same day, started getting everything done. And I just, yeah, no, I can't give up now. Stop. That, 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 that. Hey, it's that's done. how you do things. That's how you do things. Yeah. That's like the logo, same day, like everything. Yeah. Get the get the t-shirt and start selling. So exactly. actually, I love it. You you can see guys, you can see the logo in the background, daily hustle. Oh yeah, yeah, because like this is my set for the for the podcast and where I filmed all the match betting content. Uh yeah. so yeah that's awesome that's awesome so so you, you know again for the people who are watching maybe you can you know give some tips because again like there's a lot of people now doing the vlogs like my wife has a vlog channel he does mm -hmm. she does the fitness stuff you know and yeah. she's looking like you know to to just to up to date maybe keep the content up to date or maybe just make it fresh like and so would you have any advice for the people again who are looking and maybe they're doing their own vlogs kind of a just the simple ways that you can tweak the content to make sure that it's, you know, mm. it, it looks better. Uh, to make it look better, uh, I would definitely just like, obviously have like a review of your content yourself and have a think about it. Like uh, what is my audio quality? Like, like, I don't know, maybe the, the set in which you're doing it, little things like that. How can you just overall improve the quality? But, uh, one thing I would say for new people that are starting out and trying to get their content out there, I would try to say maximize like, the content you use like redistribute it on different platforms mm -hmm. like tiktok for example i know a lot of people don't like it but it's so much free engagement on tiktok like i created a tiktok like two weeks ago just for like just so i could practice it and basically i don't know if i never told you this but um i you i i do have a youtube channel uh and i've been doing it for like a, quite a long time to be fair but it's not something i'm consistent with right now actually i am to be fair but basically i used to do uh like i used to have a gaming youtube channel like I've not, not doing gaming anymore, but I, I grew that fairly big. So I made a TikTok and I just posted a bunch of old content that I had just on my computer. And I put it on TikTok on a fresh account, no followers. And I'm getting videos, getting 1.5K views just because I'm using, using correct hashtags and engaging with the people in the hashtag and just pushing the, the video on a brand new account. Like, so TikTok is a great way to like get free engagement and, on, on your content um i would say that for sure but um yeah I, I i would have to probably look at somebody's uh content for me to give more of an in-depth suggestion on how they could improve it uh personally but um no yeah i've just tried to, trends trying to keep up with trends 
and just trying to keep things as interesting as you can. Um, obviously, easier said than done, but um, I would definitely just maybe look at people that are, are killing it in your space or your niche and think, how can I do yeah. it better? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Not, so not how but, I not how I can copy. How can I do it better? That is always how yeah, you should things. I, I I love the approach. And actually, while we talked while, while we talked about the TikTok, I, I did the TikTok because that's a good. Oh yeah. For like you know, yeah, yeah. I just filmed this, so that that's gonna be that's gonna be there sitting. So you know, because like I- exactly what you just mentioned, like you know, you have to make sure that your content is diversified across multiple channels and whatever. Mm-hmm your audience might be like uh, again there's a lot of audience in the tiktok right now it's growing so fast like i know some countries is like second after the facebook and it's it's unbelievable so definitely like you know if, if you having this vlog or the company you need to make sure that you like touching all the platforms available out mm-hmm. there because we do exactly the same like we you know from social media standpoint we work with like as you know with real estate companies and that's what we say like you know because real estate it's just very outdated industry. Like everybody's like, you know, like you, when you think about real estate, you think probably about some old man landlord who has this house for 30, 40 years and he just walks around and he's like, ah, the grass is tall. And th- that's basically what it is. You know, it's just everything's yeah. old, man. So, you know, they need to definitely improve. And like the, with the service that you provide, you know, for your clients, it is, mm-hmm. is just a great thing. So thanks for advice for the, for the TikTok and, and, and yeah, awesome. So but the, the, I was going to yeah. quickly jump in on that last thing though, but like, um, e- even my own clients, even though they'll pay me to create content, they don't even take that advice and redistribute it properly because like, first of all, that's not what they're paying me. So they're not paying me to, to manage posting and do all that. I'm not pay. I, I get paid to go to an event or mm-hmm. let's come up with a video project for a campaign or whatever. And we'll shoot that. And sometimes I feel like like I, a lot of the time I'll, I'll deliver a project and like, I don't see them using it properly. And even though I'll suggest, I'll, I'll be like, I've even said to somebody before, I like, I did, um, I was getting paid to do like a, a video project, like a four, a four video project. And while I was there, I always have a guy doing behind the scenes with me. I always have a guy taking photography and doing behind the scenes. It's just free extra content basically. And their Instagram had like no content on there. And we had all these photos, all these photos that were really good. I'm like, let me have the login to Instagram. I'll post them for you if you're not going to post them. Like I'll I'll put it all on there. I like and people don't. Do you know what I mean? Just I feel like even people that are paying money for content don't even use it properly. It's a big problem in my opinion. Yeah, it is a big problem now because again, the content like in this day and age, we live in kind of a in a digital world. Like we have you know this in our hands like twenty four seven, and people spend like statistically they spend somewhere between like six eight hours a day like on a phone it's it's freaking crazy like yeah. <laughs> the amount of people spend so like if you if the company your company the brand like if you're doing the vlogs or whatever whatever business you, you're running or if not if you want to run the business in the future like you need to go and explore the social media like route definitely because mm. i mean yeah. it's just there's so much attention going on and some of the platforms like let's say facebook people statistically again sp- they spend almost an hour a day like on linkedin statistically people spend like 15 16 minutes a month so that's again that's a different different you know different people going to be coming in like facebook is everybody from five-year-olds if they yeah. can register or get registered on facebook from like 95 plus right like everybody's there but like linkedin is more like a, kind of a, this professional place everybody's there like dress nice and everybody's sharp yeah. like i have i'm a business owner so you know like what, find your audience and but I, I still would recommend go and explore like all the options twitter linkedin exactly. facebook podcast do the podcast like daily hustle because again in this day and age people consume information different ways like you remember you mentioned you're more visual auditory yeah yeah, yeah so that's what i was gonna and i was gonna uh, just add on to that as well like different platforms as well like you said how like with linkedin everyone's all professional you can approach people and talk to people a lot differently like i love instagram as a business tool like i'll just send someone a voice note and i'll just propose someone like a, like a project idea and i'll just put like an eye emoji or something like that and like you can't do that on linkedin like don't it won't <laughs> run like that on on an instagram you can be a lot more casual and like i know a lot of people or not some people don't, you shouldn't use your instagram like a like a gallery but personally i am big on the 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 landing uh like the in first impression like if i want if i if i'm because like i do a lot of like cold dms and i try to network with people and stuff and yeah. just business in general like i like to have that landing impact if you look at my page or look at 
the howling page or whatever. I I want you to think, oh, okay, this guy's doing something. I, I, he's obviously knows what he's doing, blah, blah, blah. Like, I can trust him. And then depending on how the conversation goes, obviously, blah, 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 blah. So like, I, I, you should also consider like who obviously your target audience is and then how you can approach them differently on, on, on different things. Cause like obviously LinkedIn, you kind of got to be a bit more, a bit more serious. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah you, you know what I mean? So Instagram yeah. is your space. Instagram is your space. Cause people can see it. You're just bouncing around. You're this young, fresh and kind of full of ideas guy, you know? So uh, again, maybe, maybe you're just not old enough to be dressed in a, in a suit and a tie and just send all these stuff. Uh, I used to wear a suit. I, I, I started wearing a suit when I first started working a nine to five. Within the first week, I like, it was gone. <laughs> it was just gone. Yeah. Uh, but nah, it's, it's not for me. The, I can't remember the, the last time I wore a suit, actually. Like, I'm not going to lie. But, you know, I feel like if you could, obviously, like, visually, but once you get chatting with me, you... you you, you, you can i'd like to think people feel comfortable with me in regards oh, yeah. to what oh, i do for business and that de but, um, definitely yeah. like you know in this day and age like there's people like i, I know you do follow gary v right like yeah, it, yeah, yeah. and like gary v is, is like you know he proved the point like you you don't have to be dressed in a suit and a tie to do a business right exactly. and he's running social media he's running a media company like he's working with toyota and pepsi and all these like big brands and like he, he's doing the thing you know so like because he has the business like he has the people the systems in place that that's a different thing exactly. again you know for for some time i mean it doesn't it doesn't hurt to dress up nice because like of i course, like nice yeah. clothes you know but i feel comfortable in a t-shirt as well so it just depends on the situations like if you're gonna mm. go and meet the pepsi maybe it's not the time you know to be wearing a t-shirt you know like i'm just saying so you know, but it's doable. Like, you know. yeah, I, I, I try to go for that, that sort of smart casual vibe, which, <laughs> which is very, which is very like, uh, emphasis on the casual. T-shirt with a draw tie and a tie on a, in the front. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or no, I'll, I'll just wear my, my daily hustle stuff to everything I go to. Yeah. Just like, <laughs> I love that. I, I love that. Yeah. I, lo I love the design, by the way. I don't know if it's going to be hey. uh, dropping soon or not, but you maybe. maybe uh, it's, it's, put... it's definitely on the way. Like it's, it's, I've got like the, uh, like this is the, the final product that I've got here. Like it's all embroidered custom mm. labels. It's like a stretchy material, blah, blah, blah. But like, yeah, it's ready to go. I just need to drop the money on it. I'm trying to, obviously the, the site has only just been launched. I'm trying to build a bit more awareness before I release it. Cause obviously I don't want to release it and then they get no sales and I'm just sitting with bricks for a while. Do you know what I mean? But no, it's, it's coming soon. There's a, I've got so many ideas with stuff I want to design or stuff I've already designed. I, I took like a, I have this problem where I like procrastinate doing other bits of work that I isn't most relevant right now sometimes. So when I first came up with the idea of this, I spent a lot of time designing stuff that I knew in my head I wasn't going to get made for months. So I was like, I got a lot of stuff in the bag ready to go when, uh, when, as awesome. it builds. So, so can, can, can you, can you, can we just expand a little bit on that? Cause, cause I think we, mm -hmm. we, we came to the good place again, coming like all these people are watching right now and they could be young old, but like they're yeah. in this creative space, which YouTube is right. If you're listening on a podcast that's on a YouTube available as well, but you know, like, can you just sell people again, coming from this creative place? Like, do you have any like strategies or like, where do you get this creativity flowing? Cause you mentioned all these hundred ideas that you have in your head. I, I just love, like, I, I'm, I'm a, I'm a bit terrible in that I do consume a lot of content. I consume a lot of content of other people that are winning. And when you watch a lot of other people, you kind of pick up on what they're doing and it kind of gives you inspiration to do your own things. So like, do you know what I mean? Like, uh, I, I, I just do what, what it mo interests me the most. Like, if I get bored of saying, I'll, I'll, I'll drop off it. But like, with what I'm doing now, I feel like I've asked that question terribly. Oh, was it you say the question yeah, again? Yeah. So, like, so basically, how do you get the creativity? <laughs> how do you get the creativity just I, going? Because uh, you, you I follow. Know, I, I just. Know, I know you follow. Just, the oh no 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 no. Um, it's working with with my friends, working with friends, and just people right. that I fuck with. That is that's that's that is what gets me motivated and, and gets me my creative juices going. Just working like I don't like to work alone all the time. Uh, unless it's when well, obviously I need to like I need to just bang this up. But when it's like I'm coming up with a new idea for something, I definitely like to bounce ideas off like friends or like sort of more business partners. I guess you could say like yeah. 
yeah, I'd, I'd say that. But like, I, I do obviously, I watch a lot of other people see what they're doing, and then that definitely gives me inspiration for things that I want to do, or I can when I see when people are doing things wrong, it's like, oh, okay, I know what I need to do like, or how I can do that better. So got you just got, with anything though, you've just got to, you just got to trial stuff in it. You got, you got to trial stuff and see what happens. Like I've tried so many business ideas and projects that I've just failed that I've given up with and they're just never going to start what again. You, but what do you think if you stuck with some of the projects, what, what do you think would they work out, worked out at the end? Uh, I feel like they had opportunity to work out if they were done at different times or like if I had more money to do them, but like some of them were just terrible ideas and we were just like teenagers trying to, trying to come up with stuff. Like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah, but not, yeah. Like, yeah, because well, most of the most of the time is 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 capital is the problem for the business yeah. people. Again, you remember when we met in this networking event? Like everybody, like ninety percent of the people, they came for the capital. You know that that's either potential clients or relationships yeah. that they can build to raise capital. So mm -hmm. it's one or the other, but it's it's all about the money. You know, so yeah. You know, you, you came through like having all these ideas and so now having, you know, howling creations, you know, the business and now doing, you know, the, the podcast and now launching, launching the brand in the future soon as well. So would you mm -hmm. give any advice for the people? Again, how old are you for the audience? Who, who, I'm 22. 22, man. Like being a super young, you know, fella in this space experience, like being a, you know, entrepreneur for a long time. Would you give some, you know a few maybe tips for people, for a young audience who would love to get involved with the business, like which way do I even start like? I would say start as soon as possible. Don't get too comfortable in, in whatever you're doing. Like I like I, I kind of almost experienced it a bit when I was working my nine to five. Like there was, a, there was maybe like a month or two period where like I wasn't really pushing for anything new. I was just working my job and there was no like goal. I feel like you got to, you got to constantly be pushing to ob obtain whatever your, your goal is and start it sooner, I guess. Like, don't, don't just wait around. Oh, I'll do it in a few years. Like, I've, I, know, I know some people that have no interest in becoming successful, like self-employed or anything like that. They j they're happy just to work a, a regular job. And if that makes you happy, then who am I to tell you how to be happy, obviously. Yeah. But um, I feel like, yeah, try just, just get started as quick as you can. Like, it's just going to be so much easier. Like, I, I wish... I was working at like the level I am now well long ago. I, I, like, I, and there's nothing I wish I could go back young. Like every, obviously you could wish you could do things differently. Like, but I, I, I do you know what I mean? It's just Got regret. It. So, you don't want to regret anything. Do you know what I mean? Okay. So what, what, what about, you know, the, the entrepreneurial DNA? Cause you follow the Gary Vee. I remember he said like yeah. entrepreneurship, like you have to be born with some sort of a special DNA and just make sure that you, you're, you you can become a business owner. So like, what, what do you think? What's your opinion? Is this doable <laughs> for everybody? Can you learn that or that has to I, be like in your blood? Or? I feel like anybody can learn how to make money, but being like a straight up entrepreneur and just, like, like just a hustler, it's, it's, it's a bit different. Like for me, like I was brought up in like poverty, like no, like I like single mom, like, you know, so like it wasn't always easy. So like I, I was like, when I was like 12, I was like kid at school reselling sweets and fucking drinks and stuff. Um, and I used to like go to charity shops and like, like uh, boot sales and uh, what'd you call it? Um, like, pawn shops and resell stuff on ebay when i was like 13 years old i like faked Again, my, the, faked my age the, on paypal for the american <laughs> audience that was a pawn shop not not a porn shop right yeah yeah <laughs> yeah, yeah um i used to do stuff like that so like i i never realized like back then that oh i'm i'm hustling it was just a, a way i knew how to make money to be able to buy myself clothes or to be able to afford lunch at school and shit like that like do you know what i mean like but um yeah, like any, anybody can learn how to make money. Like again, like this courses on anything, like drop shipping, match betting, or real estate. Like you can learn how to make money, but like some of the and some of the skills you you, you can't learn in, unless you do them. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like you can't yeah. you can't learn sales skills unless you do sales. Do you know what I mean? Like you can watch videos on how to talk to people and bullshit like that, but like you're not really yeah. going to get the skills until you do it. So. Definitely, you, know, you, 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 you have to you have to go with the daily hustle, you know, and again, shameless plug, get the t shirt. 
you know so <laughs> like you have to get this hustle like bug going into you you know like and this is definitely you can get infected with a bug of course mm. if you go and follow the the people like gary Vee's one of those like grant cardone like tony robbins like robert Kiefer, there's so many people that you can go and like follow but my advice would be for you guys who are again like fresh into the space like you're thinking about exploring business space like i followed so many different people and everybody's advice is great but like i, I start getting confused it was like Tony saying one thing, Gary saying another thing, and they like collide with one another. And it was like, I, I couldn't make, you know, any action with that. So, yeah. you know, like, of course you have to go and explore some options, but you know, just stick with the, you know, few, few people that you can relate to. And it just, you know, you feel like you, you're comfortable with a person, you know, so. Yeah, there's definitely so, always gonna be like different uh, people that are telling two different things, like you know Gary Vee or you know Grant Cardone. They could say completely polar opposite things on certain topics, and it's like, who do I believe? And I guess it's just down to what, what you think also will work for you, because obviously exactly. not everything's gonna work for you. Like, um, do you know what I mean? So it's, it's you, it also it's not always just just because someone with a million followers says that doesn't mean they're right. It's just their opinion. Oh, you know man. what I mean? So, it's, like it's, in this day and age, you, you can buy the followers, man. It doesn't yeah. anything. Like you know, the the the, the influencer space is, is dying. Like you know, it's it's dead. I think it's already dead. You know, like nobody. I don't know about it's dead. I really don't think it's dead, bro. I've got well, a like, fat. It's, it's, I have got a fat spreadsheet full of people <laughs> that I know I can get under underpriced uh, attention for. That I when I've got more money to just throw out for daily hustle. I'm, you know, well, I'm not talking like influencer space. I know what you're talking like, you know, cause now again, people are looking into these, like the people that I follow, follow the influencers that the type of influencers that I believe in, the ones who are having multi multi-million dollar businesses, the ones who have mm. the results, they're not just posting stuff on Instagram and Facebook with like ass sticking out and is like, look at me, like, and having no, <laughs> like, it doesn't, like, it doesn't work for me. Like, I don't believe like yeah. if that person with ass sticking out is going to tell me, go pursue that stuff and do the things like whatever. Like, I will be like, no, man, like, because like, look at the results, because at the end of the day, the mistake that I made in life, and I made that mistake probably until I was 20 plus years, I always believed that the people who are older than me, let's say 50s, 60s, or 40s, when they told me something, I thought that was true. You know, I thought these guys have the life experience. So much. Yeah. True. So I take it for granted. I took it for granted. And I used it in life you know, in my personal like life and I, I made some decisions. And again, those people have no intention. Like they don't care. They just give you advice. And a lot mm -hmm. of people that we have, you know, in our lives and again, this is for the people who are watching. I hope you're going to, you know, just get rid of some people and make sure that you have more people who give you the right advice. But I was just taking advice for everybody. And, you know, everybody was just telling me like, do this and that. And at the end of the day, the results were, weren't there. So again, you want to make sure that you take the, 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 the right information from the right people. That's, that's all I'm saying. Yeah, for sure. For you on that. So what, what about, what about, let's say what other options we can explore, you know, cause uh, again, I just love the creativity coming from you, all the energy the the it's, it's, it's freaking awesome. And I love it. I would, I would ask about the books, but I know you hate that topic. Or, or maybe, not. <laughs> maybe you have some recommendations. On books, I'm trying to think of any book that I've read that. Don't be, don't be lying, man. Come on, the audience. No, is... no, I've definitely, I've definitely read books as a kid, like at school. You had to read books and stuff like that. But I'm trying to think: are there any books in particular that I, I took a good amount of value from that? Yeah, now Connor uh, is hating me. He's like, "Oh, you, you're putting me on the spot right here." So that's what uh, happens you know what? when you do these podcasts with, with Martin. So. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I, do you know what? I'm, I, I've got no recommendations, really. Like, I, I don't read books. No, just, like, just, yeah. <laughs> that, that's fine, man. If you just expand on that, because like... Okay, I, I, why I, I don't read books? I'm, but, just, okay. yeah, I'm just kidding around, but... Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, I I, personally, I don't... like Books, that, like, I just can't... I can't get into them. Like, I just get... I've got ADHD. I've got a very short attention span. Books just don't do it for me. I'm a visual learner. I like watching like online courses or YouTube videos. Obviously, I read articles, like blog articles, but that's that's short form, so it's, mm -hmm. it's different. But um, yeah, personally, I I, I learn best through a video. Like that's for me. So I, I, whenever I'm researching stuff, it'll, YouTube is where I'll be, or, or an online course or whatever. But um, I totally understand why people read books, and I, I respect. People like I'm not saying you shouldn't read books or anything. It's not that it's just me; it doesn't work for me. But I totally agree that there are some good books out there. Um, 
just I, I know if I buy a book I'm not going to read it I'd probably get like two pages in and like if I obviously wanted to I definitely could but it's just uh, yeah yeah well, what you mentioned with the ADHD like uh, you, you yeah. know I think everybody has this you know because nowadays like uh, the attention span for a human being is so short because again yeah because of all the noise that social media just created everybody's like if you scroll on a facebook and there's nothing that would catch your eye you will just continue scrolling same on instagram and yeah YouTube. so that's why you know like you're my company you have to make sure when we provide like content that people stop on it they click on it they like engage with it and and, and go so th you know it, that's a problem like it's a problem you know i i see people going against social media saying like oh like people should go like i, I seen some vlogs like on youtube as well where people like I've been off social media for a year and this is what happened. And it's like, click and watch the video. And it's like, can... you, you're on social media. You, you, you got like 2 million, 2 million like, <laughs> video. So that, that's awesome, you know, but it, it's just whatever ways, you know, it works for you. So, okay. So maybe, maybe you want to explore this space because again, 2020 kind of a fresh start and we've been going through some stuff. You, you told me some great strategy strategic planning you know things that you're planning to put in place so maybe you can oh, okay share yeah, some of yeah. the goals that you have for for this year for the company and the brand yeah so obviously with howling creations obviously we're a creative agency video production animation things like that and i did briefly mention about how youtubers are sort of our best sort of clients and the, i guess you say the the biggest problem with our company what we're trying to fix is obviously editing when you're managing a lot of a lot of content that needs to be put out it's you need you need a lot of you need reliable editors and we have like a uh, a ratio of full-time and freelance editors because obviously you can't have all full-time editors because if you lose clients blah 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 you understand um so we kind of the same way you have an office in a in a in a country where it's cheaper to to operate uh, we kind of want to do the same thing uh, and we're looking at maybe uh, Cyberjar, which is a city in Malaysia, which is, it's been nicknamed the Silicon Valley of, uh, of Malaysia. And I, how I found about it was just a YouTuber making a vlog of their like an apartment tour and it was like, so nice. And then they said their rent was like $250 and I was like, what? And that led to me spending an hours looking through <laughs> like property places. Then I was bouncing off my, my co-founder and we were like, I wonder how much the average salary for editors are there and blah, blah, blah. And then we're now we're like, we want to set up uh, an office space in hopefully Cyberjar or maybe another place that would work. And we want to get uh, a team of editors and we want to get a project manager so we can just optimize the work that we're doing right now. And so we can take on a lot more work. Uh, we, we're, I'm based in London or I'm just outside in Essex and setting up an office and getting a full-time team there is not realistic from where we currently are um so we think doing like a smaller office somewhere else where we can have just editors only that part of the business uh and then we should be able to optimize the hell out of it and should be able to push into getting a nice office in london and yeah. other opportunities where we want to push in but yeah i i think i think that could work really good yeah, yeah. Oh, definitely. Because, you, you know, you have so much energy and creativity coming in. So it just, again, just putting, you know, the the, mis the, the missing pieces together, which, uh, you know, the plan of getting an office and all those people working for you. Because, again, yeah, like we, we remember we talked about, you know, running a business instead of being a solopreneur. Like everybody who's watching and, you know, they're, you know, they're running a business and they just do by themselves. Like it's not a business. Mm -hmm. Like if you want to create a business, you, you at least need need a few people that will work with you or for you. So, you know, yeah. what you do now with thinking about getting that and just exploring these options and moving and, you know, going and opening an office and it just sounds very exciting. So, you know. Yeah, it, I think it will work great for us because like currently, even our full-time editors are, are still remote. They, they live from home or wherever they choose to work from. And it, I think it would just be so much better to, to have them all in one space. Like, because we've got some in the UK, we've got some in Canada and we do have some in Malaysia already. Like, so it would just be, so much better if we can just have a solid team in uh in a, in a country where we can have full-time people because paying freelance like editors make a, a fuck ton more money if they're getting paid freelance than they are like full-time uh, and it's good to have freelancers because it, it it's great like because you can if you get a sudden inflow of work or if there's you know do you know what i mean like if a certain editor is sick or whatever and you need it's just easier to to get freelancers like that but we don't i don't like to 
work with a freelancer unless I've already worked with them before. There's no way I'm going to give a freelancer that I've never worked with like client work. It's always like you'll, they'll do like a trial edit or something like that. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. there's no way I'm just going to trust a random person or a freelancer, do you know what I mean, without yeah, fully yeah. being vetted, obviously. So that's kind of why. And also with freelancers, they, they, you do kind of cycle out. Like, where is, I, wanna, I do want to have a, a, a big full team like that, but. So, so what, we'll what, 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 would, what would be your, your ideal team? Like, what, what's the number for, for the people that you would like to have? <clears throat> well, I mean, it would depend on wh when we get to that position. How, at the moment, I believe we, we, need, we would need at least three full-time editors with the YouTube clients that we have. Um, and we would want one project manager for sure. But as we get more clients, it will build like that. I will probably also... Um, when we've got that space, I will probably hire another person separately for myself because I do have to manage a lot of content that just goes personally um, with like obviously the Daily Hustle podcast, with my YouTube channel and just the various bits and like uh, that I make like with Daily Hustle and that. So mm. I've th I'll also probably get another person. That's also what I kind of like the idea of. If I've got the space, I can hire people for other things and just have it relate do you know what i mean like if you're editing do you know what i mean so i we would definitely need at least three full-time editors uh and one project manager um for now i'd say but um it awesome. definitely definitely could to get a bit more ridiculous <laughs> as it grows because with with like if you get like one large uh, like youtube client that is maybe doing five uploads a week that is one whole person that you want to hire for that yeah that uh for that client so it yeah. can can get a bit so silly what, what do you what do you think you know if you, you you mentioned you know five uploads a week you know when when is it not too like when is it not enough and when it, when is it too much when it comes to the posting on youtube i mean it just depends on how the algorithm is treating let's, the client yeah, i'll be honest with you let's say doing a podcast like that you know like like we're doing now should, should i be doing that like every day or should I like launch it once a week or uh I'm probably going to say no, that you shouldn't do like five a week uh, because how these, with the clients that we work with, how their videos become successful is because they're making videos that like, will just, uh, how, how can I describe it? They're trying to make viral videos that will just get picked up on the algorithm. Like ran, I'm not saying podcast episodes won't, but unless it's with like a celebrity or someone that's big, a podcast episode isn't just going to uh, pop randomly. But like the, these channels that we work with, uh, they can have like three, five, four million subs. So whatever they upload for starters is going to get views because they've got, they've yeah, got, yeah, the, the they've audience. got the audience. They, they've got the audience. But a video, you can look at a channel and tell if a video is hit or not because they'll be like, they'll be like in 100k, 200k, 100k, 200k. Then there'll be that like one video that got a million, and that's what they're chasing. They're chasing. Yeah, yeah, they want to do loads of uploads and have that one to two to three to hit to get pushed heavily on the algorithm and that's the channel that the one that will make their money. And then obviously mm -hmm. they've got a, a massive catalog of videos that even videos from years ago are building them views. So obviously you should definitely, I'm not telling you to stop making content obviously, but I feel if you did five, if you did five a week, uh, I, I think you'd be better off doing like one or two a week and then just maybe, yeah, I think that might be better. But I mean, yeah, that, that's an interesting approach because, you know, some people are saying like stay consistent with it and just do every day, like seven days a week and you just push it. And, you know, one, one day, you know, you'll get you'll get so many content pieces like there's going to be all these thousands of pieces sitting on a YouTube and mm -hmm. somebody is going to discover you like there's more chance of because, again, like the, you see the problem with like it's it's very good. Like what, what you're saying, like I, I love that. You see, the, the problem I see that it can come up from that because if people are chasing those like one-off million view like pieces, like oh, that one video mm. content, when like if I will have that, only that on my YouTube channel, like the problem that, that I'm going to face now, like tomorrow I need or maybe next week I need to create the same video or it's not going to be the same. I need to create something better now. Yeah, that's, that's going to be a problem. It. So yeah, that's ex well, that's exactly why I don't, run my own channel like that like i don't there's a few problems with with this industry with the youtube is no one really knows how to make a video pop on the algorithm obviously there are some things that yes obviously trending topics mm -hmm. use the right tags and all good thumbnails blah 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 yeah. 
yeah. essential stuff that everyone knows. But like, yeah. realistically, it's the algorithm that will decide if your video is going to get a million views or it's going to get 100K. And because of that underlying no idea, that's why I personally won't run a channel that pays to mass create content to do that. Because there are people in this space that have four or five channels. They've got four or five channels niched out to completely different things. Yep. They just come up with the scripts or they might even hire a guy to write scripts and then they have people to do the animation and editing, blah, blah, blah. And I, I, we have the people that make that content and we could totally pump that content out. But the, the, that, that, the fact that unsecurity of at the algorithm and do you know what I mean? Like it's, mm -hmm. yeah. It, yeah. It's, it's, it's completely, yeah. I, don't, I don't like that. But, um, no, yeah, with, with your podcast, obviously, like, uh, I, I don't, I don't want to say what the best thing is to do. Like, uh, if you do them, if you was to do like seven, like one every day, like, would you, would you then maybe in a month's time struggle to make the content? Like, would you not find it like people to run out chatting with or like? Well, you, you, you see, the thing is, I think, you know, just looking from a perspective, because like the, the, the brands, like, I'm just looking from real estate, you know, perspective again because mm -hmm. that's the the clients that i deal with most of the time like I, I explore some other industries before i got involved with the business so i i seen some athletics like comedy like in the people the way they created their channels so whatever million plus subs that they have currently and you know i would love the fact just like from real estate coming back to that just having you know all these let's say if i'm going to be running podcasts every day and that's going to be 365 episodes a year so that means I met, remember we came back to the topic of yeah. you know, having million friends instead of, you know, million dollars. So I'll have 365 people that I already okay. know, I'll probably built some solid relationship with some of the people. And that's more important than just having million subs on, a, on, the, on the channel. So I look from a different perspective of, okay, you mm -hmm. know, it's a great platform for me to, like, you're now sitting in the UK, I'm in a different part of the world, and we're just, like, talking and, you know, exploring mm -hmm. conversations, we're adding value to the people, people are, you know, taking notes, and it's just a great thing. So I think, you know, if you just look for that, and if you just provide the value, if you're looking to build your channel, and don't even look, if you want to do, like, one, one a week, like, every day, if you just add value to the people, you're sincere, you're honest, like, people feel the, you know, that, that, you're a good person and that's who, you, who they want to deal with and just take advice from, it's going to work out in the end. But I'm kind of looking from a selfish point. I want those conversations no, like with the people. No, like no. no, I feel you on that completely. I, I'm not going to lie. One of the main reasons why I started the Daily Hustle podcast yeah. is to use it as a tool for me to network with people and be like, yo, I fuck with your work. Let's get on a podcast. Like, I, I, out there, man. Yeah. yeah, I definitely, I definitely want to, want to build that. And I'm, I, I, at the moment I'm, the podcast part of the Daily Hustle site is not done, but I want to have it all embedded into my site and have that. I will have it on other platforms, but I want it. I want that to be like the main landing page when I collab with somebody. They'll post that link to the Daily Hustle site. So I want to just be pushing traffic to, to the site as much as I can. Um, but uh, no, no, no. That's, that's a, a good way of thinking about it. Not having 365 episodes. It's I've made 365 relationships or, or contacts yeah. or however you want to work no I, I definitely feel you on that and that's one of the main reasons why i i have a podcast is so i can you know make good relationships with people but yeah i, I feel you on that big time yeah yeah yeah, yeah. there because there, you know there's like all these and we're just talking about one channel i mean there's you know linkedin what about linkedin twitter instagram like you, you said you talk with people you, you network a lot like would yeah. you give any advice for people again because i know there is a lot of people right now watching and they're, you know, running the businesses, maybe they're doing affiliate marketing, like selling products on Shopify, whatever that might be. So what would be your approach like when like DMing people on Instagram? What, what, what way, which way do you do it? I mean, it would depend on obviously what I was, maybe what I could see the uh, opportunity with that person to be. Like if I could maybe, if I, if I could see it leading to a podcast episode, I might just, the first thing I'll say to them would, I'd like compliment some of their work. If I, a particular thing I'd like, I'd be like, yo, I'll fuck with what you're doing there. Or something like that. I'll be like, yo, something like that. If I'm maybe like trying to go in from like, um, like a, a project point of view, like here's the thing I did yesterday. Like I was on LinkedIn. I see a LinkedIn ads on my messages, see a guy posting an event, click on the company, use email, and I get his email. 
write an email, I saw your LinkedIn ad. And then I proposed to him, oh, you doing any content for that event? Like little things like that. Do you know what I mean? Just mm -hmm. propose something like that. But uh, I mean, yeah, you just got to think obviously about, I, I mean, that the way you can approach anybody is completely different depending on what your business is or what you're trying to get out of that conversation. Yeah. So you want to think about that, obviously. You don't want to just be going in all like dicky and like over the top and asking too much straight away. But yeah, yeah. sometimes, well, sometimes well, you need... Sometimes you got to be blunt. So, so, sorry for interrupting. So what way do you build like value? Do you like like the photos? Do you like comment on them? Like do you engage for some time and then you go into the DMs or you just go cold? And I can do sometimes. Sometimes I will follow somebody and I will wait for an opportunity to slide in the DMs from their story post. Because sometimes if I can look at somebody's post and I'm like, right, they're a big time player. I've got no chance. If I just randomly slide in this DM cold with no, nothing, right. it's not going to work. No chance. Yeah. Um, but like, like, what I like to do, like, well, again, I told you about like how event production agencies and other marketing agencies are good clients of mine. So I like to try and find the CEOs of those companies and get them on my Instagram. And then if I see something on their, their, their story, that would give me a good reason to slide in and comment on that. And then I would do something like that. I've done that before. It's worked out. Um, but yeah, you just got to think that, yeah, just find the most relevant people to you and then think about how you can uh, slide in there. But I you just, depends how you want to go about it. You could be blunt. You can just be bullshit. You can try and say, Oh, I'll do something for free. Like, or yeah. show you, show them some work or just straight up ask them, do you need any photography work? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And yes, then it's no. going to be a numbers game. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You slide into a hundred DMs. I'm sure one of them will lead to an opportunity if you're re messaging relevant people and you're actually going about it proper. Yeah. Something will come out of it. Because because you've been you you've been doing this for for a while. I mean, just just connecting yeah. with people like on Instagram. Oh so yeah. You probably tweaked it a little bit. Oh yeah. yeah, it adapts like how I go about. Like for example, tomorrow I'm going to VidCon London. Okay, so what I did about four or five days ago is I searched for VidCon London 2020 hashtags found a bunch of creatives that will go in, DM them, found some companies, I've DM'd them, and I've set up some people that I might uh, I can meet up with tomorrow or, or next four days. So little things like that. You just got yeah, yeah, yeah. to slide in DMs. You've got to send emails, it's like, it's like call people. Slide, slide in DMs, man. Like, it's Literally. definitely... You, you're just doing the daily hustle, man. And that's what the t-shirt is for, is. you know, because like it it, it's is. work. It, it, it's work. Like everybody who's watching, you know, you're looking to get started the business. Like you're young, you're old. It doesn't matter. Like that's what it takes. You have to like hustle. And of course there is, you know, if you want to, like, if you're thinking, oh my God, that's too much. It's too much time. Like sliding the end. I don't know what to do. Mm. Like hire people, like pay people some money, yeah. you know, and they can do that for you. I mean, they're, they're, like in this day and age, like you can get so many things done. It's unbelievable, you know? So yeah. and you can just go back to basics and just cold calling and cold emailing. It still works. It works massively. That's yeah. how I, when I first, when I first started, uh, when, I, when I first was like maybe about a year or two ago when I was like, okay, marketing agencies and event production agencies are who I need to be friends with. I just went onto Google, built a spreadsheet of all the people on page one, two, three. And I called everyone up and said, this is what I'm doing. I'm trying to, like, I basically said to everybody, I'll do you a free shoot for your next client. Or I'll do you. Most of them said no. Then a couple of them said, yeah, all right then. They might, some of them may have just forwarded me to one of their clients. One of them had, some of them might have had me come into their office, chat with them. And they just led to opportunities just for me calling people and then saying, I'll do you a free shoot. Some of them didn't even have to do the free shoot. It led straight to paid work. Some yeah. of them, I did a free shoot and it led to fuck all. But it's just a game, isn't it? Like you got to yeah. find out, like you just got to try and error, isn't it? And like, especially like back then when I was starting out and I had less, less experience or less of a portfolio or just how just skills in general like how i've gone about like i'm a lot i'm a, I'm a much better video and photographer now than i was like three years ago so like it's, it's just different how you go about things but um yeah yeah it's just so just what, 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 stuff, what, what about what about one thing because again you you're you're like passionate the energy levels are freaking super high and people can sense that man it's just mm -hmm. like people probably watching this like whoa yeah <laughs> start talking like whoa that, that's awesome, man. I, lo I love that. You know, I love the passion and the energy that you, you know, the, the, that you push. And what about, what about that? You know, cause again, when you're starting out, there's like, 
a lot of hungry people because when you're starting fresh, you have nothing and you just go in places, you're doing the phone calls, emails, DMs, you're mm. sliding all over the place and you're just doing whatever it takes. So, but running the company right now that you have with the people that you have and the clients that you have, what do you think like is, is the hunger level for yourself and just for the people who are listening, is it the same or how you can feed that, you know, going further and not get comfortable with the situation? I mean, I will say... When I when I first started Daily Hustle uh, four months back, I definitely chilled a little bit because I don't need. I got into a position where I don't need to chase projects. Like I'll every week uh, there'll be some opportunity where someone will DM me that I've met or someone will email me and said I've got this or oh I know a person that had like when I when you make it when you make it aware to everybody of what you do somebody will eventually know somebody or see an opportunity where, oh, they, these guys need some video work. I, I, I had someone DM me like literally the other day saying, oh, I know these guys, they've got a barbershop, they, they want to do this, blah, blah. I literally just forwarded them a post from the Howling Creations Instagram of doing another project with a barber. Just send them that, here's my number. Like little thing, do you know what I mean? So like, I, the hunger, it's, yeah, like it, when you get to a position where you don't need to chase work as much, then you, you, definitely could get contempt and I definitely did step back a little bit so I could put a lot of time into daily hustle while I was building it but now I'm I'm my hunger is there and I've been doing a lot of doing a lot more networking the last uh the last month or so and I've been doing a few a lot more projects but yeah I, I guess it's I would say that when you're starting out is if you can have a business partner or someone to work with it is so much better when you're like bouncing off each other like um, what I used to love doing when I used to do cold calling uh, with my um, co-worker Miles I used to do the calls he would do the emails so we would sit in front of each other I would do the calls and while I'm calling the guy he would be drafting the email to follow up instantly and then I'm calling the next person while he's fitting. like that was a, a good way we went about doing like cold calls and things like that but I mean I guess everyone's got their own hunger I guess like some people are happy with a small amount of money someone someone to just keep fighting for more and more and more and i hope most people are like want more and more and more big but everyone has their like phases where they're maybe for like a week yeah. or so they're they're not that might not be the most prioritized thing to to get yeah. business it might be to build something or do you know what i mean it's very it's very funny what you just mentioned because you know i just uh, i just remember this i don't know if you if you can guys can see that but i saw this post uh, again it, it's it may, i don't know if you can see it it's uh, from one of the people, you know, I, I talked an interview with this guy and interviewed him, Josh, yeah. Josh Albo, if, if you're watching this interview, super cool guy. He's in a financial space. So, and he put out this photo is basically there's this big boat and the small boats over there. And I just, you know, I just texted him. I was like, man, instead of chasing, you know, comparing yourself to the others, you know, whoever boat is like, you know, there will be somebody else who will have a bigger boat. You know, and, yeah. and like, instead of that, like competing with somebody else, like, because I, again, that's how coming back to the hunger. If you just reach to your like inner potential, whatever you think that is, because like you, you think like, oh, I'm capable of doing X and then you achieve X and then you sit in that place and you're like, oh shit, I can do even more. So mm -hmm. that's like, it's, it never ends. So it's oh, no. chasing it's like, always the, more. it's always more. So, you know, like you just have to, whatever you have to do to, to feed that. Because that's that's the beauty of the game, I think. You know, just feeding feeding that the hunger and just going after it and just you know exploring things and just becoming better human being. You know, in the first place. Because again, it's all about having those relationships, creating them, maintaining mm -hmm. them, and just having these beautiful moments. Because at the end of the day, like when when, when this video is gonna be gone, when the YouTube is gonna be gone, like everybody's gonna be gone. We're just gonna remember the experiences and the moments mm -hmm. that we have in, in those particular times. And I think that that matters the most. So yeah, yeah, I feel you on that. I feel like yeah, like there's definitely always more that you can do, and I feel like yeah. maybe what I could have said earlier and worded it better. Like I, I, I've always, I'm always hungry. I just my priorities might switch, and I guess you could say I'm feasting on other things. I guess you could say. So sometimes I'm not like trying to just push sales on uh, howling as much as I could do, and I'm working on other things. Uh, but that's obviously because I don't have my own sales team put in. So it's, if I'm not pushing it. Then obviously Conrad pushes it, but like, do you know what I mean? Like our, yeah. our priorities sometimes 
Oh, you, you, you're, you know ble I mean? you're blessed to have a good partner on board. So oh, yeah, you're, yeah, blessed, you're blessed with that part. And again, like just missing some systems in place, which is again, another topic for business, uh, you know, owners to like, if you want to like all the successful, wealthy people in like in the world, they love the world systems, you know, like mm. look at the phone line systems, like, you know, ne network, sorry, that's the word network, like phone network, internet network, uh, cable network, like electricity network, like, like this is this this is what you need, and you need to create the systems, you know, in place at the same mm -hmm. time, so make sure that the business is running, you know, smooth and efficient. Yeah, I, I feel yeah. on that completely, and that's definitely what we're trying to push towards as as we grow, and that's like I said oh, yeah. with the whole uh, the editing office we want to set up, like that is for us what we was probably the most important thing for us for us to scale is to just there be no restrictions with the outflow of content because mm -hmm. that is obviously can be a problem. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Oh, there's no problem, man. There, there's always a solution to all the problems. So, oh, yeah, it's always, yeah, it can be a problem, but like, it's yeah. always a solution, yeah. yeah so yeah, come it. on, co come on, man. So it's it's a phenomenal, I love the I love the vibe again. You know, I love the vibe, I love the energy, I love all the things that you do. And, you know, particularly in this year, it sounds like it's going to be very exciting. Of mm -hmm. course, you know, like, sending prayers to you man i hope you're gonna start exploring some stuff that i told you before you know like you know maybe you will start open up to some stuff because again it's all about going fast and you know making less mistakes. Yeah. you know what i mean so but you know for the people who would love to follow you maybe you can and learn from the stuff that you do what would be the best channels for them to reach you uh, in instagram is the best place to like chat to me on like a personal level and see some of the stuff i'm doing uh, obviously, the Daily Hustle site is where I have the all the free match betting content. So, if you want to make some money, do a bit of match betting. Uh, I, match betting. So, I never explained the whole uh, purpose of it. In the in the the first video of the match betting course, near the end of it, I say that I I see match betting as a great stepping stone for for getting people into hustling and doing what they want to do in life. Obviously, unless you're Unless you're going harder, much better every day. Obviously, you're not going to be making 3k silly money a month from it. But it's a good way to make a bit of cash. But like, uh, yeah, like I, I feel like I lost the point of what I was fucking talking yeah. about. Uh, but no, yeah. I, I, the, the the bigger picture with Daily Hustle is like I want to do a lot of content with other hustlers, other entrepreneurs, and a lot of just like creatives. Like that's that's the website. It's just creatives, entrepreneurs, hustlers. That's what it is. And I'm I. I I want to do a lot of content with other entrepreneurs and other hustlers and stuff like that and use that as a way of like influence for marketing. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. people that are killing it in their space. And yeah. I guess the message, the bullshit message I'm trying to sell with daily hustle is that I want to get people into doing what they want to do. Do you know what I mean? There's always, there's always that stup stupid message for brand. Oh, we're trying to inspire people. Do you know what I mean? But like with, with what I'm doing, it's like there's content there. You can make money with that. But ideally, I want you to do what you want to do in life. I know not everyone wants to fucking do much Ben. Like, it's not for everybody, but it works. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's my yeah. terrible uh, explanation of my brand. <laughs> uh, it's it's going to be all the links are going to be again down below. I'm going to be sure Amazing. I'm going to put everything there for you guys to go and check it out, you know. And like, you, you can definitely, you know, Connor Hustle, that's again for the Instagram. Uh, if you want to go and follow him and just connect with him and see if, if you would you know, like to collaborate if you have some projects or something, mm. you know, or ju just connect and ask some business questions and just to, you know, connect with this guy because he's awesome. You know, like at this age, running places and just doing stuff, you know, like when I was your age, again, that wasn't that long ago, but you know, I was still lost. So by the fact that you're, you know, running the business and having, you know, a couple of things going now with the brand mm. and, you know, like podcasts and you know, looking, looking yeah. forward to seeing more episodes on that is just, it's just really awesome. So yeah, just got to start early in it. Just got to try and get into it as quick as you can. I was lucky. I was lucky that I didn't go to university because I feel like that would have been a massive step back. <laughs> I bet a lot of people are going to hate that. Lucky that I didn't go to university. <laughs> no, but like I, I, that was a massive head start for me. Like, cause I got straight away into experience where people would have to wait another three years before they could even start doing that. So mm -hmm. I mean, do do what best works for you, but I just try to get into stuff as quick as you can because the, 
there's a lot of stuff where you'll be like, oh, I wish I did that quicker. I wish I did that quicker. Sorry. Terrible, terrible, terrible podcast. I didn't. Oh, you, you, you see the clients already coming in. Is this live? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah um, it's, it's awesome. It's awesome. Definitely. Like, you know, there's so many ways that somebody can become successful in this day and age because there is not one like road. There's multiple, there's no, hundred no. roads. So what you're saying, like, go, go as early as possible. Yes. Mm. But if you're 50, it's not too late. You, you know, no, like, no, definitely you, you, not. Can, you can, you can jump on a wagon and just yeah. start doing things now, because like in this day and age, it's so easy to become like wealthy, rich, like if that's your goal and mm. connect with people and just build a business because technology is yeah. here, like social media. It's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. It's like, obviously it's not going to be that easy for everybody, but it's, it's so possible. Like as, yeah. as, somebody with no experience like you could pick up a hustle like i i like to use dropshipping as an example even though i, I don't actually rate dropshipping but you could totally watch a dropshipping course watch free content on dropshipping make a free shopify store sell something run ads on it and you could be making silly money like straight away if you did it successfully like it's possible to do an idea like that from scratch do you know what I mean? Like if you put the work into it, but obviously it's, it's not going to happen for everybody as easily. It, it definitely hasn't happened like that for me. I've been, I've been, it's been years I've been, I've been grinding on stuff and do you know what I mean? But like, yeah, yeah I, I don't know. Like patience, just, patience. just try stuff, try stuff. You just got to try patience stuff and, and be patient. Yep. Yeah. Patience yeah. and persistence. Pa pa patient on the long-term goal, but like, yeah quick on the daily goals like, yeah Gary, you know Gary I mean? is talking a lot about patience he's he's all about like patience yeah and like you have time you definitely you know because whatever age you are right now and you're watching this podcast like you you definitely have time you know because yeah you know but time goes quick like don't, don't just sit around and saying like oh i have time like boom one day you have no time like do mm. stuff now mm. you know but uh like you really have time just be patient like whatever because sometimes i just reflect like looking at my own business i'm thinking like oh my god like and i'm looking again doing the comparison thing and that's where the most of the time again that's what i'm saying like don't do yeah. that stuff the, your own potential but sometimes i still because like i'm not perfect so i compare it to somebody else and i'm like oh my god look at these like companies mm -hmm. and all these people they're running like fast like and i'm i'm just you know trying to catch you know like i'm eating all the dust and it's like mm -hmm. it, it's nasty you know but at the yeah. end of i'm remembering like it, it's it's not a race like it's a marathon like mm -hmm. you, you know like i'm running a marathon like I'm, i have to look like five years ten years like 20 years ahead yeah. Because I know so many people like became 50 year old, like they were a drug addict and probably some of the people, they know who I'm talking about. Like if you know who, who I'm talking about, drop a comment. Like he was a drug addict that like, you know, like when he was longer, younger, like for 10 years and like from 50 to whatever, 60, he is now like flying private jets and like multi-billionaire. And it's, it's crazy. Like things can change so fast. Yeah, I feel that. And like, I, I love the fact that I started young because even in 10 years time, I think the amount of work that I can do in 10 years time, I'm still going to be 32. That's still young as fuck. I've got ages left. So like, I love, I love the fact that I, I started, you know, what I've been doing like as early. Uh, I wish I started earlier. Like Conrad, for example, yeah, my business partner, he, he, uh, when we started working together, he was 15. He was 15. So he, when he finished uh, school, like when he finished school at 18, like, he was already making like a fat salary compared for like being 18 for like while he was at school, he was making that like, cause he started young and he got into it. And do you know what I mean? Like that's, that's great. I wish I got e started even younger. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. yeah. Cause, cause it like makes it easier. Like, like one of the books, uh, I know he had, I, I know he had the books, man. Come on. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, the Benjamin Graham, he, he, he's basically, this is not the guy that I want to mention, but Intelligent Investor, the book, um, it, it's a ph phenomenal book. Like I, I didn't read it though. I read it, I just started because I think some of the books like in life that I discovered, like it's one of them is like, oh, it's not the right time for me to read the book. Because <laughs> like I'm not in a position in life where I can read that. I, I mean, you can, but you know, I just don't think I can take something and apply into my life currently. But the guy that I want to mention is basically this guy, Benjamin Graham, was a mentor to this guy, and his name is Warren Buffett. So oh, yeah. I know Warren Buffett. Yes. Yeah, so you, you know that just important of having those type of people, you know, in life is, is just uh, it actually shows by far the best book uh, on investment ever written, Warren Buffett. Okay. So. <laughs>
So here you go, man. It's, it's awesome. Definitely. So I think, you know, we, as you see guys, we just love talking the, the two people meeting here. Like I love to talk and Connor is just mm. you know, such, so it's such an energy, you know, provider and just so much knowledge, man. I, I really appreciate for sharing, you know, the advice on social media and, you know, things that people can go and tweak and improve, you know, their stuff, you know, sliding into DMs and all of that. So that, yeah. that's really valuable. Thanks. Thanks for sharing. So again, guys, we're going to wrap this up. If you enjoyed the interview as always, you know, I know you're smart people, so I'm not going to tell you what to do. I will tell you, go and subscribe, like the channel <laughs> guys. I really appreciate you watching. You know, I appreciate, you know, tuning in and staying until the end of the video. Uh, you know, if you did that, you, you're going to become successful because that's what it takes. You have to just keep it. And you know, like it, maybe the beginning wasn't that good, but the end is, is going to be great. Hey, so, I fuck with that. I fuck with that. Yeah. You, you stuck to the end. So I love that. So again, go and follow, uh, follow the Connor Sanders again, uh, um, Connor hustle on Instagram. And I'm going to put all the links down below for you guys to go and check him out. Appreciate again, that. as always, I appreciate you staying in and Connor, it's been a true honor as always. And a pleasure talking with you, my man. And uh, I'm looking forward to our next conversation as well. Hey, for sure, man. I appreciate you having me on. Ah, nice one.